Our eyes are considered the most valuable sense organs we have, allowing us to see and experience the world around us. And like cameras, our eyes have the ability to zoom in and zoom out in order to focus on objects at different distances. But what exactly is happening in our eyes to make these shifts in focus? In this video, I will look at the changes that take place in the eye during the process of accommodation. So what exactly is accommodation? Accommodation is the mechanism by which the lens of our eyes changes shape to focus light rays from objects at different distances onto the retina. Now the key parts involved would be the lens, the ciliary muscles, the suspensory ligaments, and the retina. But before you have an understanding of how these parts are involved in accommodation, it would make sense for me to look at the structure of the eye. So let's look at some of the key parts of the eye here. Now the cornea is the transparent layer allowing light rays to enter and be refracted or bent before they enter the eye. The iris is a colored muscular part of the eye which controls the size of the pupil. The pupil would be the opening of the eye that allows light to enter and it appears black when you look at your eye. The lens would be the transparent oval shaped part behind the pupil and the iris which changes shape and allows light to focus onto the retina. The suspensory ligaments are the thin fibrous bands attached to the lens that control the shape of the lens by behaving like elastic ropes that stretch or loosen. And then the ciliary muscle is actually part of the ciliary body found behind the iris which actually contracts and relaxes to adjust the shape of the lens. Now coming to the back of the eye, we have the sclera which is a tough white fibrous layer surrounding the entire eyeball. The choroid, that is a darkly pigmented region of the eye that prevents light waves from scattering and reflecting in the eye. And this is also where you would find blood vessels located to supply the eye with oxygen and nutrients. And the retina, this is an important part because this is where the light rays will be focused and it consists of the light sensitive cells known as photoreceptors. Now the fovea is a special point on the retina where light rays usually focus. It is concentrated with cone cells that would allow us to see color when we have a lot of light. The final part, the optic nerve, this is important because this will receive the information from the retina as nervous impulses and send them to the brain where the brain would process the information and allow us to see the image. Now remember the key structures to focus on in accommodation are the parts I have highlighted in the red boxes. The lens, the ciliary muscles, the suspensory ligaments, and the retina. So let's begin with those situations when our eyes are looking at nearby objects. So for instance, when we're checking your cell phone, when we're reading a book, or using your computer. Now let's look at this diagram here, focusing on near objects. So we have a book here that is the object which is close to our eye and because the object is so close to our eye, the light rays are going to be coming at an angle. So the light rays are more divergent, they're more spreading out as you can see in the diagram. Now in order for these light rays to enter the eye and to be focused onto the retina at the back of the eye, it's going to require more bending. These light rays are going to require more bending in order for the light rays to be focused on the retina. So as a result, in order for the light rays to bend more, the lens has to become more thick. It has to become thicker in order to let the light rays refract more. So in order for the lens to actually become bigger in size, we're going to have the suspensory ligament slackening and the ciliary muscles, they're going to contract. So this is what is happening within the actual eye, the parts that we're highlighting. So the ciliary muscles are going to contract. This allows the suspensory ligaments to slacken and the lens actually becomes thick. So the thicker the lens, the more refraction would occur. So therefore, the divergent light rays coming from the book so remember, this means that the light rays are a little more spread out because the object is so close to our eyes. 
So therefore, we need to get those light rays bent in a little more. So that is why the lens has to become fatter in order to produce more refraction, to allow more bending so that the light rays can focus on the retina. Now in a situation where you bring the book extremely close to your eyes and you would notice that the words or the pictures start to get blurry. Now the reason for this is that the lens cannot get any fatter. There's a limit to the thickness that the lens can become. So therefore, when you bring the book closer to your eyes, the light rays cannot be further um, focused because the lens cannot get any fatter. So that is why the images and the words would, be, would appear blurry when you bring it extremely close to your eyes. So there's a limit to the thickness that the lens can get. So that is focusing on near objects. So let's look at this other diagram here, which shows you another view of the eye and the changes that occur with those parts of the eye involved in accommodation. So you're seeing here the ciliary muscle. Remember, these are going to contract when you're looking at a nearby object. So as they contract, the muscle contracts, the suspensory ligaments are going to slacken. So they loosen up and this causes the lens to get fatter or bulge. So this is just showing you the front view of the eye along with the side view of the eye so you have a better understanding of what is going on. Okay, let's look at what's happening when you're looking at distant objects. So for instance, if you're watching a game from the stands, reading road signs from afar, or looking at a traffic light from a distance. So what exactly happens in the eye looking at distant objects? So it's gonna be quite the opposite of looking at nearby objects. So in this case, we have a traffic light being the object, and the traffic light would be at a distance from the eye. So therefore, the light rays coming from the traffic light would appear more parallel. They'll be more parallel, and therefore, as they're entering the eye, they do not require as much refraction as in the case with looking at nearby objects. So remember, the light rays are more spread out when you're looking at objects close to your eyes, but because of the distance of the object, the light rays are more parallel, and they do not require as much bending in order to focus on the retina. So as a result, you will see that the lens is actually pulled thin in this case. So the thinner the lens is, the less refraction is required. The less refraction would occur. And in order to get the lens pulled thin, the suspensory ligaments tighten. So think of it as like a rubber band pulling the lens thin. So let's go over this and look at it in a little more detail. So we have the ciliary muscles. So in this case, the muscles are going to be relaxed and these ciliary muscles are going to control the suspensory ligaments, making them more tense or tighten. So it's going to pull on the lens and make the lens a little thinner than it would have been in the case when you were looking at a nearby object. So the key points to remember, thin lens looking at distant objects, thick lens looking at nearby objects. So let's look at the other diagram here. So we're seeing the side view once again and the front view. So here the ciliary muscles are relaxed and that is going to cause the suspensory ligaments to be pulled tight. So you can see that the suspensory ligaments are actually more stretched out, they're pulled tight and the tightness of the suspensory ligaments pulls the lens thin. So we have a thinner lens. So less bending is required in order to focus the light rays onto the retina. So what happens when accommodation isn't quite working for you and you may have to get glasses? What exactly is happening in the eye? So let's look at the first condition, myopia, short-sightedness. So usually the problem with short-sightedness is that the person has a long eyeball. And because the eyeball is longer, the light rays coming from distant objects focuses at a point before the retina. So remember, in a normal eye, light rays will focus on the retina. But with a myopic, a myopic person's eye, the light rays are going to focus before the retina. So as a result, the objects are going to appear blurry, out of focus. Now, in order to correct this, the person would require a concave lens. This is going to help stretch out the light rays some more 
so that the light rays fall on the retina and not in front. So as you can see, at the front of the eye, we have a concave lens and that helps to diverge the light rays. It's also known as a diverging lens as well. So it helps to spread out the light rays a bit more before entering the eye so that the light rays can focus on the retina instead of in front of it. So that is a problem with myopia, commonly known as short-sightedness. So this will be a case where someone will require to sit down in the front of the class because you know you want to see the board um, instead of sitting in the back. So the distant objects are going to be appearing more blurry. So someone with myopia shouldn't sit at the back of the class. They should sit at the front where they can see the board more clearly. Okay, so that is myopia. Now on the other hand, the other condition, hypermetropia, for sightiness. So basically the problem here, now we have a sharp eyeball or a weaker lens. So the issue here is that the light rays coming from near objects focus at a point behind the retina. So instead of in front, the light rays are focusing behind the retina. So consequently, any near objects viewed are going to appear blurry and out of focus. So that is the problem with farsightedness. So people who are farsighted, they have a problem with seeing objects um, that are up close. So these are the people that would require reading glasses. So they would need a convex lens to correct this condition. So the convex lens will be placed in the front of the eye to allow the light rays to converge some more. So basically come in some more in order for the light to focus on the retina. So the convex lens, that would, how you, that would be the way in which you would correct hypermetropia. So this, this is where the individual would need reading glasses when they're reading, looking at their cell phone, any object that is up close. So that is the difference between myopia and hypermetropia. So hopefully you have a better understanding of accommodation in the eye and these common sight defects that can affect your eye. If you found this video helpful, feel free to subscribe, like and share. And don't forget to hit that notification bell.